Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. So in today's video what we're going to be going over is creating character movement for your player with the new input action mapping system in Unreal Engine 5.1 and beyond. So again as you know the input system has changed and I have done a basic video on that as well but today I'm going to be covering the axis mappings as well as the input mappings so we can actually create our character movement. So if we hit play, what we can see is we're just going to have a very basic character in which we can move the camera around, we can move forwards, backwards, left, right, and even jump as well. So all of our basic character movement, including camera, we're going to be creating and setting up today. So this is what we're going over and creating today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So as you can see, I'm just in a completely blank project, so I have nothing else in here other than the start content. Now obviously you don't have to do that if you don't want to, but I'm just doing that to show you that I'm not doing anything else, I'm creating the character from scratch. So the first thing we want to do is we want to actually start creating our inputs, so we can actually then control the player later on. So to do that, we're going to hit control space, and I'm going to create a new folder called character, or characters. In here, I'm going to create another folder called input. And then in here, what I'm going to do is right click, go to input, and create an input action. I'm going to name this IA for input action and I'm going to do moving first so let's just name this move. We don't need move forward and we don't need move left right like we did in the old version we can do it in just one now. So we're going to have move and we're going to open it up straight away. In here all we need to do is change the value type from digital ball to axes 2d vector 2d like so. And we'll hit control s to save that like so. Then we can close this. Then what we're going to do is go back to our content browser and we can actually right click on this and duplicate it and just rename this to IA look instead now. So this is going to be how we're looking on the camera. And because we duplicated it, we don't need to change the value type again because we've already done that now. And one final time, we're going to right click, go to input, create an input action, naming this IA and then jump. So we have our moving, we have our looking and we have our jumping. And with jump, we're going to leave the value type as digital ball, like so. So we'll close all these like this. Now once you've got all your individual input actions set up, we want to create a mapping context so we can actually then assign which buttons are going to do what for these input actions. So if we open our content browser again, we can right click, go back to input, and create an input mapping context. I'm going to get that, name this IMC, and then you can name this whatever you want, so default, or the name of your player if it's going to be different for each player. I'm just going to put my game as let's say I'm going to have one for my entire game. And we're going to open it up like this. Then all we're going to do is add in an action mapping here. Add in the one we want. So let's do jump first since it's at the top. And then we can either choose the button from here or we can press here where we can select key value and then press the button we want. So for me, I want space bar. As for me, obviously jump makes sense to be on space. That's all we need to do for this part. Then we can add in another action mapping. Let's do look next, as again, that's next on here. And I'm going to set this to be mouse XY, or XY, sorry, 2D axis. So basically, when we're moving our mouse on 2D axis, on the X and the Y, like so. And that's all we need to do for it. Now, the next one, we're going to add in mapping again, and we'll do IA move. Now, this one is a little bit more complex. So we obviously want to set in our buttons first for this. So now in the old versions, we had move forward and move back. This is again different, so what we're going to do is all in one. So we'll get W, then we'll add in another control binding to the action mapping here, or we'll get A, add another one for S, and add another one for D. And of course you can add in as many on here as you want, so you can have W, A, S, D, you can have the movement arrows, you can have gamepad controller, anything you want, just put on here. And then this next part is where it gets a little bit more complex. So we're going to open up the drop down menu for W, i.e. for going forwards. Then what we're going to do on here is we want to add in a modifier, and this modifier wants to be a swizzle input axis values. And what this does is it basically makes it register as a Y axis instead of an X axis. And then if we open this up, we can just make sure that it's set to Y, X, Z. It should be by default, but make sure it is. And again, you can see swap X and Y axis like so. Then we can close this one and move on to A, so going left. We're going to add in another modifier, with this one it's just going to be negate. So negate there, which as you can see is going to invert the input pi axis. And we open this up, make sure it's x, y, and z all ticked, again should be by default. That's all we're going to do for A. Then we're going to go down to S. 
S is now obviously going backwards. So we're going to add in another modifier. This one is going to be swizzle input axis values again, with again being Y, X, Z. And then we're going to add in another modifier on here, with this one being negate once again, with again the default values being X, Y, and Z all ticked. And that's all we need to do for S. So again, that's going backwards. And then finally, last but not least, with D or going right, we don't need to do anything. It's by default, that one will be fine. So essentially, if you didn't do any of this for all of these, it would just be moving right the whole time. So by default, we go right. So we need to set up all the different things on forward, left, and back to make sure we can actually control that perfectly how we want. So now we've got our input actions and our input mapping set up for jumping, moving the camera, and moving the player. We obviously need to set up the code for that in our player blueprint as well, but we can now actually control it. So I'm going to save this like so and close it. So next, let's actually start setting up our player blueprint. So we'll go back to our content browser, I'm going to go into characters, and I'll right click, create a blueprint class, and I'm going to create a character like so, as this is going to give us a lot of the great default stuff we need to create our character. I'm going to simply just name this player BP, very inventive, but we'll open it up straight away. And again, in here, you can see we've already got our collision and our mesh and our character movement and everything that we'd want. So what we're going to do is select the mesh and just give it the mesh that we want. So I'm going to give it tutorial TPP. But obviously, if you have your own custom mesh animations, perfect, set that up like so. And if you don't have your own custom ones, but you do want some, I do have a video which I'll leave on screen now and link in the description down below, where you can use Mixmo to UE5 and then set up an animation blueprint using those animations as well. So we'll compile and save that, but you'll notice we also don't have a camera in here. So let's add that in now. We're going to add, and we're going to add a spring arm like this, which is basically giving the collision of the camera so it's not going to clip through walls. And with the spring arm still selected, we're going to add in a camera. Very simply like so, it's automatically attached it to the end of the spring arm like this. I'm going to move the spring arm up a little bit just to give it a bit of a different look. Then we want to change some settings for this. So what we want to do is if we select player BP self up at the top, we're going to search for pawn and we want to make sure use controller rotation your is false so it's not ticked. And if we go back to the spring arm, what we want to do is make sure we tick use pawn control rotation and on the camera we want to make sure use pawn control rotation isn't ticked. It should be left false by default but just make sure that it is false. And something else that you may want to do in here as well is if we select the character movement and search for orient, what you can do is tick orient rotation to movement. Now this one isn't necessary for it to work but it does make it a look a lot better. So essentially what it's going to do is when you go right it will actually make the player face to the right and then go essentially forwards going to the right instead of it just kind of strafing to the right instead. So obviously you can choose if you want it to strafe or actually look in the direction it's going in but for me I prefer it with orient rotation to movement on. So we'll take that, compile and save and that's the basics of our character now set up for us. What we want to do next is actually start setting up the movement. So we're going to go to the event graph to do this code. We'll delete begin overlap and event tick as we're not going to need those but we will keep event begin play. What we're going to do from here is drag out and cast to player controller. You should have one of these by default. It should come with the project even when you create a blank one like I did. And as the object, what we're going to do is simply get controller. Not get player controller, just get controller like this. Then out of this, so as player controller, what we're going to do is get enhanced input local player subsystem. And this is essentially what allows us to control the player. As you can see, it is the input player subsystem, but obviously local for each individual player. Out of this, all we're going to do is simply get an is valid node with the question mark like so. Plug that in there. It is not valid, we're not going to do anything. And is valid, we want to actually start using this mapping context which we just created. So the reason we're getting the is valid is because if this doesn't exist, if it isn't valid, well, then we don't want to try and add something to it. But it should always be valid, but it's always again good to just have this just in case, because otherwise you'll get an error and it won't work. So out of the enhanced input local player subsystem, what we're going to do is add mapping context. So we want this one here, connecting that into is valid. Now the mapping context is going to be the one we just created. So I need mine IMC my game like so. Let me just double click this to get some rewrite nodes like so. Now you can obviously change the options and priority and all this stuff if you wanted to, but I'm not going to be going over that today. But you can see what we've now got 
is this player blueprint, which we've just set up, is now going to be using the input mapping context we just created. So this player can now move forwards, backwards, left and right, they can move their camera, and they can jump. Obviously we haven't set up actually controlling those yet, but they now have the ability to do that. So we're going to compile, save that, and actually start setting all this up now. So if we find some empty space, we can right click, and let's search for IA, and we'll do jump first as it's the easiest. So we get IA jump. Now you can get this without the mapping context being added, however it won't work when you come to play the game. So again, IA jump is very easy to do. We're going to come off of triggered and get jump, which is a function you should have by default with the character blueprint. And completed is going to be stop jumping. It's as simple as that. So we've got jump and stop jumping like this. So let me select this, hit C to comment it, and I'm going to name this one jump. Nice and simple like this. And next, let's do the camera input. So we'll go underneath this, right click, get IA look, I named mine. So we get that there. And what we're going to do out of this is out of triggered, we're going to get add controller your input. And after this, we're going to get add controller pitch input. So the your is obviously going to be left and right, and the pitch is going to be up and down. So now what do we put in the values for this? Because again, in the old system, we used to just have the input axis values on our events, which we obviously don't have now. But because when we created our input action, we created it as a vector 2D, what we now have is this action value. If we right click it and split the structure pin, we have the X and Y, or what I should say, sorry, is the action value is the vector 2D. Whereas if we go to jump, the action value is a Boolean as that's what we left it as. So if we right click our action value, split the structure pin, we now have the X and Y values, X going into your and Y going into pitch. As again, the X is going to be left and right, the your is going to be up and down, or the Y, sorry, is going to be up and down. So we can now select this, hit C to comment it, and we've got our camera inputs or our camera controls like so. And finally, last but not least, let's set up the movement input. So we'll right click again, IA move, We'll get this in here like so. And this is again going to be coming out of triggered. So let's just drag all the way out and get add movement input. Now this is going to be very similar to how we did it in the older versions as well. What we're going to do is right click, get control rotation. We'll right click the return value and split the structure pin so we have access to the X, Y and Z values individually. Then what we're going to do is right click and we want to get right vector like so. Right click that and split the structure pin once again, connecting in the X to the X and the Z to the Z, but leaving out the Y. And then the return value of this will go into the world direction of the add movement input. Again, that is the same as it was in the older versions, it's just the input going into it is slightly different now. So this one is obviously going from left and right as we're getting the right vector of it with the X and the Z like so. Now the scale value of this is again gonna be the same thing we did for the camera input. So we'll right click the action value, split the structure pin, and the X is going to go into the scale value of this. So again, in the old versions, it was our axis value. Now it is our action value. Very similar, but obviously I hope you can understand the differences. Then forward and back is going to be very similar. Again, the same as it was in the older versions. What we can do is we can actually just copy and paste all this here, connect it in, and all we're going to do now is change the control rotation and the get right vector slightly. So we'll actually delete and get right vector, right click and instead get forward vector like so, just get forward vector there. Splitting the structure pin of the in rotation, this time just setting it to Z into Z like this and the return value into world direction. And the scale value of this one is obviously going to be the Y of our input action instead of the X. And I'll double click this to get some root nodes once again, just to keep it looking nice and organized like so. And I'll move this over. And there we have it. We now have our movement input as well. So if I select this, hit C to comment it, I'll name this movement input. I'll just move all this up like so. And that is pretty much all we need to do for it. What we've done is we've set it up so we're going to be using the correct action mappings and action values and input actions inside of our player blueprint. And then we're setting up using those. So we can jump, we can move the camera, and we can move the player. We'll compile and save that. And we're going to close this as well. And again, that is now it done working for us. Now, if you've done what I've done and you've created a blank project, you're going to also need to make a game mode. 
that's just so we can spawn in the player. If you've already got all that set up so you can spawn in the player and all that great stuff, you can ignore this part. But it's very quick and simple to do. All we're going to do is go into our content browser, right click, go to blueprint class, open the drop down menu for all classes and search for game mode and we're going to get just normal game mode there and hit select. I'm going to name this my game game mode just because that's the best name I can think of right now and we don't even need to open it, we don't need to do anything with that. All we need to do is go to world settings over the right here and if you don't have the world settings go to the top right where you see settings and just press world settings and it should give it to you and take you there as well. Then in here you should see game mode override, just set that to the game mode we just created. So I named mine my game game mode and then the default pawn class we're going to set to our character so for me that's player BP. Now when we press play we should spawn in with our character and we can see that we can move the camera, we can jump and we can move forwards, backwards, left and right and again you can see it's rotating the player character to be where we're moving to. So this works perfectly for us. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. What we've done is we've set up our own character movement so we can move forwards, backwards, left and right as well as moving the camera and jumping as well. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please do make sure to like and subscribe down below as it really does help me and the channel out a lot. So again, thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you all in the next one.